Okay. <clears throat> All right. Sorry for the delay, everybody. I had to delay the stream a couple times. Um, but it's good to go now, and I think I figured out the problem with the echo. So we should be good to go. So <clears throat> here, um, here we have the images that we're going to be using for today. And uh, I like this parrot because uh, my mother-in-law has one of these parrots, and you know we're going to be drawing up one of these. So hola amigos, gracias por ver si están viendo y disculpa por delatar tanto, pero <clears throat> ya empezamos el el stream y se me hace que figure el problema que teníamos con el eco, ya no debería de haber eco y aquí están las imágenes que vamos a usar hoy, ah, igual que siempre las, las los links para estas imágenes están abajo en la descripción del video, son completamente gratis ah, para usar estas imágenes y también en la descripción del video van a encontrar links para el plástico que estoy usando para la plantilla y también para la pintura, para el aerógrafo y para todo lo demás para hacer este ejercicio en, uh, en su propia casa. So down in the description you'll find a link to both these images. Um, and they're free to download, free to use. You'll also find links to the stencil material that we use to uh, cut our stencils here. Uh, as well as the airbrush that I'm using, the paint that I'm using. And all those links, if you use those links, it helps the channel out, it helps the channel grow, and it helps bring you more videos like this. So if you want to learn how to airbrush, you know, whatever, an octopus, and you, you know, you, you want me to post one of those videos, you know, if you use those links and you leave some comments, uh, it's easier to make it happen. So <clears throat> anyway, here we are today with the stencil all cut out. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the background like always. I've taken out the main cutout of the stencil and we're gonna go ahead and uh, just focus on the back. So aquí tenemos la plantilla ya recortada y voy a empezar por la, hacer la parte de atrás. Ahí en la parte de atrás tenemos ese verde y los árboles, pero están muy burrosos, ¿verdad? No, no, no tienen no tienen mucha forma so voy a empezar con un verde fosforescente y nomás le voy a empezar a meter los verdes más o menos más oscuros que veo so I'm just going to start off with some fluorescent green and uh, everything in the background is kind of blurred out right so it's kind of the style that I'm going to go for I'm not going to really copy the picture exactly but uh, just to give it the same kind of flavor I'm going to go in with some fluorescent green as the primary or the base, all right? And just kind of lay it in all over. I'm not really being, uh, you know, selective. I'm just kind of looking at the picture, seeing some dark spots, and adding it in there. So, no más lo estoy cubriendo sobre todas las áreas. No estoy siendo muy uh, selectivo. No más estoy viendo la foto de la referencia y más o menos estoy viendo hasta las las partes oscuras y dándole forma a uh, más o menos borrosa pues con el verde fluorescente y luego voy a cambiar al verde normal so I'm just gonna just switch over to some bright green and uh, I'm just gonna start adding some of those shapes going in right so voy a empezar con el verde y voy a empezar a hacerle esas formas que se ven en la referencia y igual nada va a ser Muy definitivo, todo va a ser medio borroso. So I'm not going to be um, super defined with my strokes. I'm just going to kind of be blurry and uh, quick and fast, right? So I'm just going to get it in there. So, todo ligeramente y borrosamente cubriendo estas áreas de la... Y haciendo más o menos los puntos que ves en la foto y es más o menos un árbol, ¿verdad? pero se mira bien borroso, borroso. So. Esa es la forma que le vamos a hacer. Right, so we're drawing in that tree in the back, but it's really blurry. You can't really tell what's happening. It's just a bunch of branches. 
and that's kind of what we're going for. We just want it to be super blurred out. But you want the you want to kind of make your imagination trick yourself into thinking there's a tree back there all hanging out. But all we're doing is kind of like these uh, cloudy kind of effects, and then once it's dry, right, we go back and add maybe some little darker spots. All we're doing is building up off of that fluorescent green. We're kind of using our reference as a guide, right? But not too much of a guide. We're kind of being loose and free with it. Yeah, so, estamos más o menos usando la referencia como un guía, pero no tanto, ¿verdad? Nomás más o menos dándole ligeramente y dándole forma como si fuera un árbol allí, pero en la verdad que estamos haciendo como nubes verdes, ¿verdad? Pero todo es bien borroso allá atrás, ¿no? la verdad que no se ve lo que es y eso es lo que estamos haciendo ¿verdad? So, más borrosamente todo aquí I'm just going to switch over to some gray and we're going to kind of build up that hut that's in the back. So voy a cambiar al gris y vamos a hacer esa, ese, como se dice, esa casita que se vea en la parte de atrás. Um, y le vamos a dar con el gris primero, ¿verdad? empezar a darle forma. Igual, todo borrosamente. ¿verdad? Actually, I came in with black, so yo <laughs> yeah, agarré el negro en vez del gris, so esto es negro, pero igual la misma, la misma cosa da, nomás hacerle forma. Alright, so you can come in with gray, I guess, first, but I just picked up the black on accident, so the same kind of difference if you just want to shape it in there, nice and blurry, it doesn't have to be all defined, right? And that's not what we're going for. And, uh, um, you know, just kind of be loose with it, loose quick. Make sure you go past the edges, right? Don't just stop at the edge there. Make sure you go past the edge to make sure the design looks like it's behind our stencils here. All right, that's all we're doing. And again, we kind of want to trick the brain into thinking that there's something back here. We're not really trying to define it out too, too much. We just want it to be really blurred out, really back there. So we are going to kind of give it a little bit of a you know, shape, I guess, but everything's soft. Nothing's sharp at this point. Everything's real soft. We're just working it in. So, todo suavemente, ligeramente, nada está muy definido, todo ligero. Y luego igual agregarle unas líneas, unas definiciones al, a las áreas verdes. So we're going to add a little bit of darkness to our green. Right? And now I'm going to add a little, kind of like a silhouette kind of going around. A little um, a vignette, I guess, all the way around. En black, so yo le quiero dar un, un oscuro a todo alrededor y también unas áreas oscuras a la parte de atrás, muy verde. <coughs> right, so I'm giving it some tones into the green and then I'm also giving it that vignette around. Right, and I want it to be nice and dark on the edge. Right, not this edge, not yet. I'm just going to come back in. Head it all the way up and around. Get these spots. Okay, so, más o menos usando la referencia, pero a la misma vez usando la imaginación. Y tienen que más o menos darle la forma para que la imaginación se dé, se dé vuelo, ¿verdad? Y la imaginación es lo que va a te va a hacer el sentido de que hay árboles o hay algo atrás ahí. Ah, pero la verdad que, que es algo borroso, que no, que no es nada, ¿verdad? Y vamos a tomar un poco de amarillo. So I'm just going to take some yellow. And I'm going to kind of 
cover up some of our tones here. So voy a tomar amarillo. Right, and I'm just gonna kind of go over some of our tones here. And you'll see once you throw that yellow on there, it's really going to kind of switch it up. And I like throwing the yellow over the black because it makes the black kind of, you know, not just the black, it's, it has a tone over it. And you can be real free with it, you know, right? Just kind of cover the whole thing if you want. Alright, and then I'm going to come back in with a little bit of gray, this time for real gray. So, le di con el amarillo y ya cuando le den con el amarillo, la verdad que cambia de tonos ¿verdad? atrás. <coughs> y um, lo que voy a hacer es ahora voy a regresar con el gris y le vamos a dar aquí nuestra casita. Dos, dos, dos. Ah, y le vamos, queremos que las líneas pasen sobre arriba de la cinta. He, he cortado la plantilla y luego he este, pues, puesto esta cinta hasta así. Para hacer el palo, ¿verdad? So I've put the stencil here and then I've used a piece of tape to extend our stick, right? Our stencil from our stick. That way I don't use so much stencil um, plastic. You, you just use a piece of tape to extend your uh, your stick there. And then all we're going to do is to make sure you go when you're adding these uh, lines in. So you go all the way past the tape, right? Don't stop at the tape, make sure you go all the way past it, make sure you go all the way past the stencil. And just kind of build it up all little by little. Right. Maybe you add a little gray in the back. Alright, uh, hold un poquito de gris. Right, just to add some shape to it, just and maybe get some of those branches and some of those leaves kind of out there. And you get the, the impression of a shape, but there's really nothing there, right? There we go. Then I like to come back in. I'm just going to come back in with the white, right? Because not everything in that back area is so dark. And I'm just gonna kind of work off the reference right here. And you just see a little white spot right there, a little bit right here. Right, and I wanna make sure I kind of stay soft with everything, don't make anything real defined. All right, so, estoy haciendo el blanco. Y igual, todo tiene que ser suave, ¿verdad? No, no hacer nada muy definido, todo suavemente por este momento. Mantener la suavedad de, de, y lo borroso de, de la parte de atrás, ¿verdad? And the same thing on the trees, right? We're going to add some, some light highlights. You kind of use your stencil so you can kind of, I mean your reference, so you can get a pretty good idea of where you're going to add those in, right? And just kind of work them in all the way around. And again, I'm not going one, I'm not trying to go one to one with the reference, I'm just kind of doing my own thing. But I do want to give it the impression of some trees back there, you know, so I'm kind of, kind of using the reference as a guide, but I'm being kind of loose with it, and just kind of going with it, you know. <clears throat> Alright. I think that looks pretty good for the background. Right. As you can see, it kind of looks a mess. 
but I like it when it looks a mess because then when we add this nice and defined in there, it's really gonna create that contrast and that that's gonna look really blurry and this is gonna look really sharp and we we'll work from there, right? So, como pueden ver ahí ya se mira <coughs> medio, ¿verdad? medio bleh, pero a mí me gusta bleh porque cuando le agreguemos esto de aquí, este pájaro, aquí que se mire bien detallado, bien definido, con la parte de atrás que se mira bien borrosa, la verdad que va, va a dar ese efecto, ¿verdad? Que esto se va a ver mucho más mejor cuando, especialmente cuando lo ponemos junto a lo de atrás. So, <coughs> empezando aquí. Ah, uh, este va a ser un proceso medio diferente. Right, so this is going to be a little bit different process. As you can see, I have these all kind of cut out here. But I will be lifting these up kind of little by little. And uh, I'm going to start off with some Create Text Bright Blue. So I'm going to just switch to that real quick. So voy a empezar con el verde, I mean con el azul. Azul bright blue de Createx. Right. I'm just gonna take some bright blue. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to some bright blue. I have the bright blue loaded up. <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of work our way backwards. Um, that's what I would say. So <clears throat> starting, I guess, with these here. And I could, I guess you could really just lift them all if you really want to. See all these wings, all these flaps, they all lift up. Right, if you follow the lines on the stencil there. Right, all these lift up. And actually, we shouldn't do them all because like some of these are laid back. So we'll start with these outer ones first, right? We'll work our way from the left to the right. But like these here is all one, and these is just one, two. So we can lift that. So, empezando aquí con las alitas, ¿verdad? vamos a empezar con las plumas del pájaro. Y empezando de la izquierda a la derecha, le vamos a dar un poquito de azul. Y es muy importante que trabajen muy cercano de su, de su plantilla y no echen um, pintura por todos lados. ¿verdad? So, all right, so once you get to like these kind of stencils, it's really important that you work really close in right and i like to use my fingers as kind of a block so that i don't get overspray going everywhere right i want to just kind of keep it in there and the inside of my fingers right here usually catches all the overspray because i'll keep them like this right so we'll hit that edge and you see you lift it you have that little edge right there and then we're going to hit this one oh too much just hit them lightly Right, real light, so I'm just my mal estoy dando bien ligeramente y si te sale una parte así muy muy cubrida, ¿verdad? es muy importante arreglarla ahorita ¿verdad? so, if you get a piece like this where you laid it too dark, it's important to fix it now, right and go back and just lay a little bit of white and uh, you know, go back and fix it, right don't, don't just think it's going to be fixed later, because you gotta fix it right away. And then same thing, we're gonna keep moving on here. And these are just a bunch of little cuts right here, right? Like always, if you take the time with these, it really pays off. And again, we're just gonna hit it with a little bit of blue. Because we're really just going to use this as a guide, right? We're going to take this off and then we're really going to fill that in. We're going to come back in with the Maui Blue. But we want all 
all these little guides for these feathers because it'll make it that much easier for us to replicate the bird if we know where his feathers are exactly. So just hit those all nicely, light. Normal estoy dando ligeramente, ¿verdad? Cada una de las alitas de las plumas. <coughs> y la verdad que esto nomás va a ser nuestro guía, ¿verdad? ¿No? Una, ya cuando aquí tienes nuestra plantilla. La verdad que esto nomás va a ser el guía y ya usando el azul. Y el azul Maui vamos a rellenar las plumas y hacerle la definición de las plumas. Pero primero necesitamos saber dónde van las plumas, ¿verdad? So, todo lo que estamos haciendo es dándole con el azul una pluma a la vez como pueden ver nomás le estoy dando bien ligeramente as you can see I'm just hitting it really light I'm not, I'm not going dark with it at all Get it all the way up. Kind of a slow process like I said but this is the only piece that's kind of like that and again it's, it's kind of what you have to do with the only when it comes to feathers Hello?
All right, sorry about that. I got a phone call. But anyway, we're almost, almost at the end of the tunnel here. Sí. Disculpenme, y bueno, llamada, pero ya mero llegamos al final del túnel aquí, del final del, al final del camino. This one here, we could go a little bit darker here, because that one's actually a pretty good defined. It's blue there. So, aquí en esta área de aquí, cuando ya levante este pedazo, le pueden dar azul uh, bien, bien cubierto, ¿verdad? Y luego vamos a empezar um, <coughs> con esto, rellenando esta parte de aquí. So, we're gonna fill in this little piece right here that's missing, right? I don't know if you can tell that that's missing right there. Um, but we're gonna fill that in with some black. So le voy a dar negro a esa parte de ahí. And then I'm gonna take this, which I should have done already. I don't know why I didn't do this. But I could take that up. So le las últimas dos plumitas aquí. Es muy bueno levantarlas y darles un poquito de azul. So we're just going to lift those up. And then hit them with a little bit of blue. And I think we can pretty much pull this whole thing off. All the way. I think it should come on. Yeah. There's supposed to be a cut. There go. go like that. All right. So ya tenemos esta parte de aquí cortada. Y ya de aquí ya vamos a empezar con el azul Maui. Y voy a cambiar el azul Maui. Y la verdad, actually. So I'm gonna hit Maui blue, but I'm gonna take a piece of tape first. So voy a tomar un pedazo de cinta, y aquí nuestro pecho, verdad, debe de ser amarillo. So nomás voy a cubrir ese pecho con un pedazo de cinta. What's up? You gotta go pee? Okay. This baby has to go pee, give me one sec. Switch to some Maui blue. So we're going to combine Maui blue. Right. And we're just going to really start by. Um, kind of covering it. Ah, y nomás con el azul Maui voy a empezar por más o menos ligeramente cubriendo toda esta área. Y damos nomás una pasada ligeramente a completamente a nuestras plumas aquí. 
y estos colores son transparentes, so no se preocupen mucho de que la pintura vaya a cubrir la azul. ¿eh? Right, so these colors are transparent, so you don't have to worry about the Maui blue going over the bright blue because the bright blue is darker, and so it will cover. I mean, it will hold over the Maui blue, right? So we're just gonna go ahead and build all this in. And if you want to put your outer edge stencil in there, if you feel more comfortable that way, that's perfectly fine. So si ustedes se sienten más a gusto poniendo su plantilla de afuera, es, es completamente bien. Y a mí me gusta dejar esa orilla un poquito blanca. ¿verdad? So I like leaving that white edge because it makes it look like it's kind of glowing. Um, but I'm just going to make sure I get a good coverage over everything. Ah, sí, ya más o menos cubriéndolo todo muy bien. And here's where our French curves come into play. So aquí ya es cuando llegan nuestras curvas. Y vamos a usar nuestras curvas para darle más acento a nuestras plumas aquí que vamos a estar um, definiendo, ¿verdad? So we're going to use the French curve. We're just gonna let that dry up a little bit. But before we go and do all that, we want to make sure we have all the blue and all this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and focus on this bottom. Right? So antes de antes de tomar okay, can, antes de tomar um, y de definir esto, vamos a ver que eso se seque, verdad? Y vamos a tomar y definir aquí esto también que va, va a ser casi igual que eso, verdad? Vamos a darle la definición que debe de llevar so voy a tomar el azul el bright blue okay. voy a con, I'm gonna switch to bright blue and then I'm gonna fill all these lines in right so if you cut out the stencil you'll have these lines here Those and fill those in. Then we can pull off the tail. So, ya rellenando esas áreas con el azul, podemos quitar la parte de la colita, las plumas, ¿verdad? La colita, y eso te va a dejar estas líneas así, ¿verdad? So, aquí regresamos con nuestras plantillas y con el azul. Y usando también igual la referencia. So right here, coming in back in with our French curve set and using our reference, we're going to start adding these details in and shaping in our feathers down here, right? Because not all these feathers are uh, dark or not all of them are really light. And we just use the French curve. And uh, don't get too close to this edge here, but get it close enough to where you feel comfortable. And then at the end, we're just going to come back in and you could even use your stencil that you cut out, right? And put that back in for a sec while we give it an edge. But for now, we're just focused on these feathers. And we're just going to work those feathers in. <clears throat> um, so, you know, kind of using these lines here. And your reference picture. Right, and all we're doing is adding the blue in. And one side's like Maui blue, and one side's like blue blue. Ah, so, usando las líneas, y luego también usando su foto de referencia. Ya, ah, denle su figura a las plumas. Okay. Ahí si le tienen que dar dos, tres pasadas para que quede el color que quieren. Está muy bien. Estos colores son transparentes, son lo más pasadas que le den, más color que va a cambiar, ¿verdad? So these are transparent colors. So if you want to go over it a couple times, three times, that's perfectly fine. Because the more you go over it, uh, the darker it will get, the more defined, the more contrast. Um, so don't be afraid of going back in there maybe a second time to add a different shape or a different line. Go ahead and put 
this in there. Coming real dark off the edge right there. So that darkness. So the end of the sky is over there. Estirando bien, oscuramente, ¿verdad? See how that's different from that? Then we're gonna just take some Maui blue. So aquí ya voy a cambiar al azul Maui. Que el azul Maui es como un color como turquesa. Que alguien dijo que era como una turquesa. Oh, hey, what's up, bro? Ten bucks, hola, ¿cómo estás? Luis Antonio Silva, ¿cómo estás? Miguel Rodríguez, saludos. Sergio Sánchez, saludos. Luis Elizondo, saludos. Eddie Baez, saludos. Uh, Adrián7793, saludos. Alberto Flores, saludos. Uh, HD Stencils, what's up? Thank you for watching. Pete Cologne, you're welcome. Thank you for watching. Everybody, everybody, thank you for watching. <clears throat> so I'm going to take the Maui Blue and I'm going to cover these areas right here. All right, I'm just going to come back in. And I just love this Maui Blue color, to be honest with you. It's one of those blues that's just like real nice. You know what I'm saying? It just looks really good. So As you can see, we, we fill that in. Got this whole area to work on now, right? <clears throat> and that's what we're gonna focus on now. So we're gonna take our our uh, stencil here, and we're gonna take the regular bright blue. So we a tomar nuestra curva. Voy a cambiar al azul. Bright blue, vea. A normal azul. Y le voy a empezar a dar forma a estas alitas, ¿verdad? So, I'm going to take the bright blue and I'm just going to accent some of our curves here. See how these here? And I'm gonna just going to start building those up a little bit. And I'm not going to give it these crazy, crazy long highlights. As you can see, all I've done there is add those two little separations right here, right? So, you see this right here? And I'm just going to come back in. And just add a little separation right there. See that? Bam. And the baby has the problem for a second, so give me one second. So again, we're just taking our French curve here and we're just gonna keep building off of those same edges, right? Maybe I'm gonna come in off this edge this time. Same thing here. And all I'm doing is adding a little slidey itty bitty bits. You know, I'm not really going heavy, nothing like that. Más ligeramente le estoy dando forma a nuestras alitas aquí. Okay. Use your reference picture. And here we got these coming up. Right, and they come all the way up like that. All right, see those there? We're going to switch over to these. 
maybe we got a dark area right here, right? So we're gonna come back in right here. So this area is dark, I see. So let's rellen it aquí un poco de oscuro. Ay, esto también. Alright, so you see any dark areas? You fill those in nice and dark. Like I said, if you gotta come back and hit it again, maybe a second pass or a third pass, that's completely fine. But all we're doing is building up those lines that we see on this pretty bridge. So aquí nomás estamos haciendo las líneas y las formas que se ven sobre la foto, ¿verdad? sobre la referencia. And we're just using the reference picture to kind of build up these lines and these tones. And maybe make up 10% of it, but most of it's coming from the picture, right? As you can see there. So here we have these, and you can kind of see where it's, the other ones are, right? So we're just going to come back in, and we're going to bring a stroke down off of each one of those. You can see the edge, bring it down. So de cada una de estas curvas aquí, vamos a traer una, un sombreado hacia abajo, ¿verdad? Y eso nos va a dar esa parte oscura. So that's all we're doing is bringing that edge down. And we hit our edge here so it's nice and blue. So they don't make it in my story yet, but I can see it in azul, azul. Ay, igual, más vamos a seguir con nuestras alitas. And where you see one of those, just bring an edge down. Hitting those edges and bringing them down. And then once you got that layer in there, you come back, highlight some of the some of the um, feathers there. See those coming in, and here we have another kind of a hard edge right here. Tenemos otra orilla oscura. Vamos a tener esta orilla. And then we're going to take the, and kind of maybe shade it in a little bit, right? We're going to want some of that to be a little bit darker. These down here. And here too, we have a kind of like a mumble jumble of, uh, of feathers here, but you have your lines there set for you. Just use your lines as best you can. And we're gonna bring those dark areas out, leave the turquoise in there. Alright, and then you see that feather right there. Give it that highlight, separate it. And come back in. And just slowly build it up. It's no no rush, you know, we're just kind of giving it those tones. <clears throat> And here we have this, right? So <clears throat> same kind of process, but this is kind of an area we could kind of freehand them in because we didn't cut those out. They're kind of little. So we're just gonna use our French curve here to kind of build this up some feathers the best you can right there, right? Maybe define some of the edges right there. Blend them in. All right, once you have that all in there, go back down. All right, so ya teniendo todo eso, ya rellenado todas nuestras plumas, vamos a regresar a la parte de abajo. Vamos a darle rellenado. And we're just going to hit some of those edges again, right? And really bring out some of those dark areas. So ya sacándole esas áreas oscuras, oscuras. Right. 
and then we're just gonna switch to some black real quickly so voy a cambiar al negro y voy a darle aquí en so I'm gonna hit this edge in this area poco de negro and all I'm doing is just creating a little separation from these feathers and those feathers there you know, nothing too drastic, too crazy. But that's all we're trying to do is create some contrast and some difference. You can add in every little dark spots you see. So, aquí agregan las áreas oscuras que pueden ver. Yeah. And I'm just not gonna go too into detail, but I'm, I think that looks okay for now. I can go back and detail it later. But we really want to focus on on the getting the bird done, right? So <clears throat> I'm gonna come back in here and using our French curve and our reference, we're gonna find these dark spots and so we're gonna add them in there. there and that's why we have these in cuts like this is because stuff like this this makes it real simple see like this one here and just come in here get this edge yes yes esos recortados así que se ven así puestos para dentro verdad para eso sirven muy bien en esos en esas áreas así pueden poner su recortado en su curva y luego regresar y hacer esas rayas oscuras ¿no? maybe working a little freehand and we have another edge right here and then one right here And I'm just kind of building it up as I see. I'm not really being too critical. At the same time, you know, you want to make something nice, so. I mean, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a dark area right there. So I'm just going to do some freehand, uh, un poco de mano libre. Y luego unas primas tienen unas áreas ¿verdad? que se miran oscuras aquí. And this area has a little bit of dark. So just go ahead and add that in. Just, you know, you don't have to hit those super dark either. You're just going to kind of be light with them. And they'll pop right out for you. You don't have to do too much. Pretty good. And we're just going to kind of work our way around with the black. Simple. Simple, quick, effective, right? And so that's all we're doing. And you could really take all day detailing all these out. And kind of. I don't want to say it looks too good right there, but it looks fine. And yeah, I think I'll stop right there. At least with that. Because we are going to take this tape. We'll take that off. Forget we had the yellow there, so we're gonna cambiar al amarillo. Thank you. Uh, make sure you wash out your blue really good. So I'm taking out and washing out my blue so I can switch to the yellow. So if they're cambiando al amarillo. 
voy a más o menos rellenar esa área con la amarilla. So I'm just gonna kind of fill that in with yellow. It's just regular yellow from Createx. Nothing too crazy about it. Si, no más relleno eso con amarillo, verdad? Y aquí ya podemos quitar esta parte de aquí. So I'm gonna start by taking this first piece. To lift this up. So vamos a levantar este pedazo primero. Le vamos a dar amarillo ahí dentro. So we're gonna hit yellow in there. We're gonna bend this back and we're gonna leave that one in there. You see that? This. We're gonna hit yellow. And then this whole piece should lift up. en el black, o sea, aquí vamos a regresar con negro y esa orilla que acabamos de pintar la vamos a recalcar con el negro usando mano libre. So that same line that we just hit with the yellow, we're gonna remark it freehand with a nice soft line. Right? Hit that softly, throw that in. Same thing over here, and then we're gonna use our curve. to fill in this bottom piece here. So aquí ya usamos la curva, vamos a rellenar esta parte de abajo. Let's see, just like that. And we're gonna kind of just hit this edge right here of these feathers again with a nice soft black line. So I'm going to put the edge of the plumas with a line of black. And then we're going to add a little shadow coming off there. So we're just going to hit a little shadow coming off there. Nothing too crazy. Then we're going to pull back this piece. Three M works really good. We're gonna pull back this piece right here, and we're gonna hit that in with a little bit of black. So voy a jalar ese pedazo para atrás. Le voy a dar un poco de negro a esa orilla, y luego ya podemos jalar todo eso para atrás. Igual esta orilla le voy a dar un poco de negro. So I'm just gonna pull that back, give it a little bit of black, take our straight edge here, and we're gonna hit that line that you see in the picture. And we can take that and fill that in, right? Then we can just take off the rest of this foot. So ya aquí ya podemos quitar el pie. And I almost see the end of the tunnel. And we're just going to add some freehand in here for the foot. And black out the nails. So aquí ya mano libre le vamos a dar negro a las uñas. Y luego le vamos a dar la textura que se ve sobre las manos del perico. ¿no? So then we're gonna give it the texture of the feet. Come back in with a little bit of white on these feet right here. So voy a rezar con un poco de blanco para darle la textura del pie. Aquí a esta área. And then this piece right here, right? It's not just yellow. So I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna take some white and I'm just gonna add some some white coming up. So this area de aquí, no nomás es amarilla, es, es como, um, como pelusa de, de, del, del pájaro y tiene blanco. So le vamos a dar un poco de blanco a estas áreas para que resalte de allí. So all I'm doing is creating this real soft edge right here, making it look like he has some furry feathers kind of coming off there. Maybe hitting that edge right there. Right. Cool. 
And now we get to focus on the head. So ahora ya llegamos a la parte de la cabeza. Y voy a empezar por darle con negro a todas estas áreas. So I'm going to hit all these open areas with black. Okay. Try not to get an overspray everywhere. We're going to hit all those with black. Then we're going to take out the beak. So we're going to get out. La boca del perico. Si se dice la boca, no sé. I'm gonna take out the beak of the bird. And we're gonna work on the beak. Which is pretty simple because it's just black. We're gonna take some black. And we're gonna kind of shadow that in on one side. Right. I would recommend using your reference for this. Yeah, so aquí usando la referencia vamos a dar forma a la boca del perico Hay un poco de detalle ¿eh? don't be afraid to give it some detail in there I like leaving that white edge, it separates the front from the back, and we can go ahead and take the rest of this stencil off. So, aquí ya podemos quitar lo demás, lo que queda de la plantilla. No más es eso. Y vamos a empezar por rellenar con color. Alright, so we're going to start filling in the colors of the head, and I like to start with yellow. I already have it loaded up. So voy a empezar con amarillo y aquí igual usando la referencia nomás le voy a dar amarillo hasta donde está rellenado. Right, so I'm only gonna hit the yellow in the parts where it's yellow. Right, use your reference picture. Let's just freehand it in there. <clears throat> Simple. Now we're gonna switch to the Maui blue. Voy a cambiar al azul Maui. Make sure if you are like me and you have one airbrush for all your colors, then you get all that yellow out of there. Switch to Maui Blue. And we're gonna start building those feathers that we see in the back. Let that yellow dry up real good. And then we're gonna start. So, ya cambiando la su Maui. Vamos a empezar a darle las plumas a que se ven acá atrás. Alright, we're just gonna start building up the tones that you see here. Also has some green on his head, so I'll leave that area for the green. So también tiene verde sobre la parte de arriba de, de su cabeza, so dejen área para el verde. Yo le voy a poner un poco de azul a su perito aquí, a su, a su boca. Pero voy a cambiar al verde, so I'm just going to switch to the green. So bright green. Work it in wherever you see it. So I see there's some over here. And there's kind of some behind this beak here. Okay. 
¿Dónde vean el verde? Agréguenlo. No, agréguenle el verde. Simple. And then I'm gonna come back in with some gray. So voy a regresar con el gris. Y voy a empezar a darle el detallado aquí a estas áreas. So I'm gonna come back in. Now I'm closely gonna start adding some of these details in these areas right here. And just start building them in little by little, right? aquí ya dándole forma con el gris a estas áreas y combinando el, el azul con el amarillo y también dándole las formas que se ven sobre la, la referencia right, so just use your reference picture you see he has all these nice little wrinkles right here so we're gonna build those up with the gray really lightly because you already have the black in there you don't have to do too much sweet and you know just keep working it in there Síganle agregando los detalles que ven sobre la referencia con el gris. Right. Some areas you just kind of got to prep it for the black, right? So you just kind of there's tones that are kind of going in there, and you just kind of got to get those tones in there. So then you come back in with the black. Just such as this is the mouth, right? We have all that area built up, and now we're gonna come back in with the black. So, todas estas áreas aquí, como pueden ver, las hemos preparado por el negro, verdad? Y ahora aquí ya le vamos a empezar a hacer la lengua, verdad? Se ve la lengua. Vamos a empezar aquí esta área donde se mira que tiene muchas de esas plumas medio pelusudas, ¿verdad? And then we add the detail that we see and work the stencil in with our freehand work. kind of see it's coming together all right and we're just gonna go ahead and finish off the bird by taking a little bit of white so vamos a acabar aquí el pájaro tomar un poco de blanco and darle un poco de, de luces santa so we're just gonna add a little bit of white highlights and maybe some of these feathers want some of them to stick out we want some of them to be you know highlighted up so we're gonna take our edges here and we're just gonna highlight some of those and when adding highlights I like to just be kind of you know gentle I guess would be the word I would say don't try to add too many or too too bright. I mean, you could add a lot, but don't make them bright. Or you could add a few and make them really bright. And um, you know, it usually seems to work out pretty good. So, so you see, is all I'm doing is bringing those out little by little. 
And you don't have to hit every single one, right? So like these right here, maybe I'll leave those alone. But maybe I want this one. Make sure we got that one. See that there? Looks pretty good. go ahead and uh, highlight our beak here uh, so dándole luz alta aquí a la boca del perico right and you don't have to do too much if you do too much it might not look so great so it's better to keep it simple come in here add a little free hand right, and you can really take all day detailing it out if you wanted to uh, I think for the video's sake I think we're pretty good right there and we should just finish off by doing our stick Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take off our stick. So ya aquí ya podemos, ya cuando estén ustedes felices detallando su pájaro, ¿verdad? Que yo puedo tomar todo el día si quiero, pero ahí se mira muy bien. So ahí lo voy a dejar y voy a empezar con este palo aquí. Y yo tengo un video enseñando de cómo hacer la madera, ¿verdad? Pero aquí nomás para hacerle rápidamente un palo. Um, voy a tomar café. So I'm just going to switch to some brown. And I'm just going to make this a quick, simple stick, right? I don't want the stick to be the main the main feature of the thing, of the piece. I want it to be the bird. So I'm just going to take some brown. And we're just going to bring some streaks going up and down. I'm going around. big circle right here ah, so, más o menos usando la técnica que enseñó en el video donde enseñó hacer como los aspectos de madera le voy a empezar a agregar el efecto and I have a video showing how to do this wood grain effect so if you need help on how to do this go ahead and look up that video and uh, you can go ahead and do it for yourself we're going to let that dry for just a second. Vamos a dejar que se seque muy bien, bien, bien. Y luego regresar con la plantilla. Darle acentos a nuestra madera. Right, so we're going to come back in with the French curve. Maybe give accent to some of those lines that we just painted. Right. Maybe add in some new lines. Because we can do that with the French curve. So no más le estamos dando figura con la, con la plantilla. I'm taking it up. I'm going to switch this in black. So voy a cambiar a negro. La misma cosa, ¿eh? le, le voy a dar un poco de líneas y un poco de figura usando el negro. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Add some more shapes and some more kind of uh, wood wood definitions. I don't know what you would call them, right? Just kind of giving it a little bit of shape and working along. This is more like a branch that you would see out in the woods, not not like a wood from Home Depot or nothing like that. I maybe want to add some black. Nice fine black lines right here. Voy a agregar unas líneas negras. Finamente. I'm going to just 
not in the wood right here. you're done with your wood you're happy with your piece of wood yeah, go ahead and zoom out step back and really take it in as to what you've created what you've made so that it gets the colors correctly because that light I think is too strong. So ahí está amigos, en la foto de nuestro pájaro. Y usando las plantillas igual, ustedes también pueden hacer su propio diseño. Su propio pájaro en casa. Y como siempre, los links están abajo en la descripción para hallar las imágenes de la plantilla y igual la imagen del pájaro. Um, and don't forget, friends, you guys can find the link to the, these images down in the description, as well as the link uh, to all the stuff you'll need to make this design, the airbrush, the paint, the stencils, the plastic. You know, everything is down in the description. Make sure you use those links. It helps the channel out. It helps bring you more videos like this. And uh, yeah. So, no se olviden, amigos. Todos los links están abajo en la descripción. Si usan los links, les ayuda a traerle más videos como este. Y si en el futuro quieren ver más videos, um, nos ayuda bastante traerles más videos como este usando sus links. So, gracias por ver. Nos vemos en el video que sigue. Ojalá les guste, les ayude. Nos vemos al rato. So hopefully this helps you guys out. And we'll see you guys next time. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks. We'll see you.